All righty. Uh, how's everybody doing? Good? I can't see everybody. Christ, you're going to have to move your music stand back up. Yeah, I know. Jeez. Do you have to clean up after them a lot at home? <laughs> you just hold the on. Solidly not going to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the one and only uh, Daily Baker Himes. Hames, 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 Hames. So this is Price's wonderful better half um, by far. Uh, but I love you, Price. I do love you. I love you a lot. Uh, and you might ask yourself, why is she up here? Mainly because she's, I think she's pretty cool. And so if you're pretty cool, I get to invite you to come up and, uh, and, and be up here. Uh, but other than that, she actually cares for the community in a great way. She cares for us. Uh, she cares for the larger, in, you know, entirety of Bellingham, the city, and, and things that are going on. Uh, I'm going to brag on her for a second. Uh, daily attended Western. Uh, what did you study at Western? Human services. Human services makes total sense. It'll make sense for you in a second. Uh, while she was at Western, she volunteered with the uh, Lighthouse Mission and was working with their volunteer coordinator and the events coordinator and did a lot of things. Actually, I remember Price having to go to all the balls and the galas and all that kind of stuff. He's like, man, I got a busy weekend. Uh, and then uh, Daly went on to work at Bridget Collins, which is uh, a house uh, resource here in Bellingham that works with families and specifically children who have dealt with abuse and kind of walking them through that process. And, and, uh, and she uh, did a lot of work with that, probably some overlapping between those two even, uh, oh, yeah. between the two. Uh, and then, uh, but now Daly is on staff at CTK Bellingham, which was one of our campuses. Uh, and so she works uh, at CTK Bellingham as the outreach coordinator on the care team. And so the care team at Bellingham, uh, just to bring some context to the room, the care team is, is responsible for a lot of things. Uh, the food farm and share that you hear about every year, we've done uh, produce boxes for our community. That care team is really involved with that. Uh, our CTK Blessing, which you'll hear a little bit more about next week. Um, our CTK Blessing, which is the, uh, the funds that we take in as a church that specifically can't go to any of the operations of a church. So it doesn't go to bills, lights, insurance, salaries, or anything like that. It goes directly into our community. So it blesses people who are in need. Uh, blesses families that are in need, uh, and for us specifically, it re reaches the people that are our neighbors, uh, where we live. And so that's a cool thing that we have. We'll learn more about that um, and, uh, and the local funds. And so it works with those things, which you guys are definitely aware of those. Um, and they've really worked to create what they call community partners. And so uh, Wendy and Daly and her team have established some community, it's called community partners. And so will you tell us just briefly about what a community partner is? And uh, we don't have to go into who they are, but what, what they serve and why we have them. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, at CTK Bellingham, we have 11 community partners and we're excited uh, to see different partners also at campuses as well. Some of those are like the Lighthouse Mission or Boys and Girls Club and Getty Refuge. Um, a new partner is World Relief. So there's 11 of these guys that we get to just build relationships with and from that fill whatever their need is. Um, not just show up at their doorstep with a bunch of canned goods, but be like, hey, what does your staff need? What do you guys need in this season? Yeah, and I think what was really struck me about the work that they've done and I think where we can posture ourselves as a church and even as individuals is it's a partnership. I think oftentimes when it comes to a lot of those partners that we have, we desire as the church to think we've got it all figured out on how to do it. Say places like Agape House, Bridget Collins, Lighthouse Mission. Oh, man, the church should be able to solve homelessness, right? But I think with the partnership, we realize there's people out there that know what they're doing. And so instead of trying to recreate the wheel or recreate something ourselves, we're saying, hey, We've got resources of people. Why don't we come alongside you who's figured out a lot more than us and we're willing to work with them and just provide needs, whether it's even paint on the wall, like an like a actual, just a, you know, a, a logistical need or a physical need, or bodies in the work. And so that's been really cool uh, to do that. So one of our community partners is the Lighthouse Mission that you mentioned. 
and we're gearing up to partner with the Lighthouse Mission to do something really cool. You want to tell us a little bit about that and maybe the opportunities we have to, um, to serve with that? Maybe just more about, you know, yeah. <laughs> the physicians. Yeah. yeah, so the Lighthouse Mission, um, it's no secret that homelessness is a pretty big issue, and they are a big name in the game uh, here in Whatcom County. Uh, and for the past three years, we've been able to provide additional beds. So during the colder months, their main campus, is that me or is that What's you? Okay. Uh, <laughs> their main shelter, which houses 200 people, reaches capacity. So um, during COVID months, they were able to move to the what used to be the public market building on Cornwall to provide extra capacity, spread people out. Um, but even that isn't enough. So we use their old facility on 1013 uh, to give 35 extra beds. And so this year, December 1st through February 28th, we are going to be providing the volunteers, the financial support, the oversight, um, and following their lead, partnering with them to have 35 extra beds at that building. Cool. And so that's a definite need that they know and they recognize and they know the people and we get to come alongside it. And actually, she wouldn't admit to it, but daily, like, she, like, runs that. <laughs> she does. She's got a lot of work ahead of her in the next coming uh, few months. And so, uh, daily, uh, how might we be able to work with you guys uh, to provide some of those needs, hit some of those needs, or support you guys uh, in any way? Yeah, so I would say first and foremost, follow whatever nudge God places on your heart. Uh, it's not a one-size-fits-all fit all process, so there'll be general volunteering, so from around 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock every night from December 1st to February 28th, we would love volunteers at the shelter, um, spending time with the guests, playing a puzzle, or you know, helping us do the things that do keep it running, like doing the dishes, cleaning a toilet, um, those kinds of things. It uh, doesn't sound glamorous, but it helps keep it all running, and the stories that we get to hear from just having a warm, welcoming space in that environment, um, that those interactions are my favorite part of the job, honestly. Um, there's other ways to get involved, too. We covet your prayers, honestly. Uh, this is a big undertaking. Um, and so if, as you think of it, as God nudges you, pray over it. Um, also, we have laundry. We need to make sure the bedding gets washed once a week. So if you're a bright and early morning person, um, I bless you. 7 a.m. Saturday <laughs> mornings. Uh, I'd love to get you plugged in to do laundry. It's Price and I did it a couple times at the beginning of last year. It makes a really fun date morning, I won't lie. <laughs> Uh, and at the laundromat, or there's, we need drivers too to get the guests from uh, base camp, which is on Cornwall, three minutes down to uh, 1013 West Holly. So kind of a bunch of different things, but absolutely come talk to me. Yeah, and so where, where do we sign up mm -hmm. at CTK? CTK serves dot org forward slash shelter. There's also a QR code in your bulletin, bulletin. and there I'm yeah. also going to be in the back with the little paper clipboard, good old paper and pen, if you don't want to do any of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's a, there's a carrier pigeon that will carry our sign-up sheet into <laughs> Daly's office. Uh, no, there is paper and pen. Paper and pen is a legit thing, because here's the deal. You guys can say, oh, sign up online, but you're going to find out. I'm going to challenge you here in a second. Uh, to actually walk back there and put your name down uh, for the opportunity that we have to serve. And why? Why would we even want, why would we even be able uh, to do that? Or why should we do that even? Hopefully, hopefully I provide some clarity to that uh, piece of it as well. Uh, and so there, there is some training around it that for some of the positions, why don't you tell us just a little bit about that? Yeah, so even though I was, you know, paper and pen, we do need you to sign up at that. And then that sign up will lead you straight to, we got two training opportunities and they're coming up quick. One is this Wednesday, uh, 6.30 to 8.30. It's via Zoom. So super on to comfort that one. Comfort your own home. Yeah, comfort your own home. Or the following Sunday on the 20th, same time, 6.30 to 8.30, but you get to be in the shelter. So we'll have a training then as well. And that's just to posture our hearts to... Um, to walk into this kind of an experience with what God would have in store for us, honestly. Um, it's one of those things that's both, I remember when I came on staff, I was like, this is terrifying, God. Why, why, why? <laughs> but he's got this. Yeah. It's a, it's a way for us, the church, to take what we've built uh, as an environment, a culture, uh, 
a sense of belonging, love, acceptance, and take what we have here and show that to somebody. And so the training specifically talks about being able to do that in that unique environment of which, I'll raise my hand, I haven't really been involved with. I haven't put myself in that position. And so, uh, so that's what that training is. And that training specifically is for those positions that are interacting with the, with the staff and with the people there at the mission specifically. Uh, and you'll come to find out as I challenge you to be the laundry person. Uh, the laundry one, you don't necessarily need to do the training. It's a, it's a thing you could attend and actually learn from, but the laundry is something that's plug and play. Like Daly said, an opportunity for you for a date morning or a father-son or mother-daughter or father-daughter, whatever, you know, opportunity for you guys to catch a cup of coffee uh, and uh, do some laundry together and serve in a way that God will actually probably equally help you as much, your heart in it as much as it serves a great purpose at the Lighthouse Mission as well in the overflow shelter. So, so cool. Awesome. We did it. Sweet. All right. Well, now uh, I get to guilt you till no end on... No, I'm just kidding. Till you can laugh. Joking. Um, no, no. Uh, no, we, ha- we started this new series, and it was just so fitting to... Uh, to you know, I knew... I, I mean, I knew Daly last year when she was in the, the middle of all of this in uh, going through it and how much work it was, and I thought, you know what, as a church, um, if nothing else, support Christ and their family and, and daily and what they're doing, but more so than that, just partner with our, our church family that is already boots on the ground in this unique opportunity. Uh, and we've started this new series, No Strings Attached, which was the great fit for this. Uh, Amber did some brainstorming early on as she kind of walked us into this series last week, and this was a few weeks ago we were getting into this, and she actually listed daily in her work, remembering what she was doing last year and all that kind of stuff as part of an opportunity. And so I grabbed a hold of that uh, and, and wanted to get her up here. Uh, so thank you for, for doing that. Um, uh, but Amber kind of did a great job setting us up last week with this No Strings Attached. Um, and uh, she talked about a lot, even what we mentioned, understanding God's heart and under our understanding our heart in the matter of these things and why we would practically and in a genuine way serve uh, people around us, neighbors, family members, friends, strangers, homeless, you know, uh, abused, neglected people, people that just need the love of Jesus. And so she talked about God's heart and she talked about keeping our head on a swivel. If you remember just being aware of everything that was going on around us, she challenges us with two amazing prayers. Uh, and they were a prayer that we would see people the way that God desires for us to see them, if you remember. And that, uh, that uh, we would pray that God would give us the unique opportunity to step out in a practical way. And those were two of the prayers that she really challenged us. And I tell you what, those are if you don't know the severity of those, those are some pretty heavy prayers. God, show me your heart and move me. Is, is if you boil it down, show me your heart, God, and move me in that direction. Um, and, uh, and if you're praying those prayers, God's going to do some miraculous things and he's going to use you in it. Uh, and so what I came away from walking into this week is what role do we play? What role do we play? And if, we, if we're going to get personal today, uh, because I actually know that a lot of you were wrestling with this idea because we had some conversations of how we should or shouldn't help as individuals. And, and, the, and I love the list that Amber gave us of the excuses that we often just role play in our heads because as she said them, I was like, oh, geez. And then if you know, I actually had to apologize to my son. I had to like own up to those excuses that I had played out uh, on, on Micah's ability to observe something and want to give towards something. Uh, but we have those excuses, uh, and, and what we don't want to do is, uh, is, n- is neglect the prompting of God. We don't want to neglect when God lays something on our heart. We want to get to the point, instead of, um, instead of pushing it off or dismissing it, we want to press into it and allow God to uh, play that out in our And so 
so the question is, what role do I play? What role do you play um, in, 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 in this idea of helping out and serving with no strings attached? Uh, the age-old question for me that, uh, that fueled the birth of this series and why I signed up and said, no, this is a great thing for us to talk about the month of November is uh, what benefit is it to me? Like, how does this, how does my mentality, how does my serving, how does my uh, ideas, how does that benefit me? Because I think oftentimes, even if we, like, don't necessarily overtly think that way, we process things that way. How is this going to benefit me? How's this going to benefit my time? How's my schedule going to work into this? How's my abilities, strengths, weaknesses? How's, how, how, what am, what's going to benefit me in this? Uh, and I think a lot of times we can do this uh, uh, of the time base, the actions and reactions, what's, what's produced, we want to know the outcome and we want to know if it, if, if it benefits myself. Or at least uh, I want to know what the uh, direct outcome might be. I want to be able to see that because, uh, because then I, I know that even if it doesn't affect me, the outcome that is produced is going to be a positive outcome, and, and, and I'm willing to give towards that. And it becomes this idea of accomplishment, accomplishing something as the outcome, right? I think we can oftentimes live in that realm uh, or uh, at the very least want to see that. And it becomes an agenda-driven action. Uh, it becomes... Uh, an agenda we adapt to do a certain thing, act a certain way, serve a certain way. Um, and, uh, and, and that really becomes the opposite of this idea of no strings attached when we attach an agenda to it. Um, and uh, it doesn't display the genuine, the practicalness of uh, what we hope to accomplish in this series, what we hope to kind of posture our hearts within, within the month of November. Um, and, uh, and, and I don't know about you, but we just are now exiting probably the most agenda-driven season of the year, right? With the political uh, voting and all that. I mean, like you can't help but see everything that fills your mailbox and all the commercials. Thankfully, they're coming to an end. And, and no matter what side you land on, the other side has an agenda that you don't agree with. And so this idea of agenda-driven is really something that is very... I mean, I think we can all pick up on it. We all know it's, it's pretty easy to spot an agenda uh, when it comes to uh, ourselves observing things, and it's no different for the people that we serve as well. That when we approach it with an, a, an agenda and a sense of accomplishment, a list of things, of things that we have to do or should do or, or uh, a to-do list uh, or just an act based on uh, you know, gaining my merit and my, uh, my uh, ability to be known for what I'm doing. Um, and what uh, Wendy and Daly and her team have really worked hard to create with this community partnership is this genuine thing uh, where, uh, and, and we want to do this as a church as well, where we set aside our agenda and we just come into a situation where we get to work in a genuine way to just serve. Just serve, uh, you know, the best way we can. Uh, serve in a way that, you know, that partners with somebody that is shoulder to shoulder, is behind the scenes, is 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 in support and encouragement of, uh, and and it really becomes a genuine act of love, of the love that we get to display and show to uh, other people. Because um, I think for us, uh, our own agenda, uh, uh, we don't have. The, the, with our agenda, we don't have time, we don't have resources, we can tell ourselves we don't have talents. Uh, our own agenda is one where we want to achieve something for ourselves and, 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 and the people that God has placed in our lives to serve do not need an agenda. They don't need uh, us to show up and knock off a list of things that, they, uh, that need to get done in and around them. Right? We, as followers of Jesus, those that have placed our faith, hope, and trust in Jesus, believe that Jesus is what we need. 
to get through whatever season of life, whatever circumstance, whatever situation, whatever uh, life circumstance, all those things. Like we, The people, we, you, need Jesus. And there was probably a point in your life where you, or maybe there was points throughout your whole life, last week, the week before, many years ago before you knew him, uh, or, you know, j- even just recently in recent history where maybe you've fallen him and, and then you got to a point where you didn't. We, you need Jesus. And that's the same thing for these people uh, that we serve. That what they need is to know and experience the love that Christ has for them. Right? And Jesus modeled that for us. This no strings attached love, this this service, this uh, ability to, uh, to uh, wholeheartedly love uh, and, and encourage and come alongside a group of people. And he modeled it all throughout the Bible. He modeled it in a great way when, um, when all the disciples, all his closest friends had been following him and hanging on every one of his words and his teachings, and they gathered in the upper room. And, and Jesus at that moment knelt down and did the awkward thing of washing feet. I don't know if you've ever been a part of a foot washing. I recently observed one just about two weeks ago. It's an awkward situation. So let's get the water basins out, and we're going to just set up. No, we're not going to do that. You guys were like, <gasps> um, but Jesus did that. He started washing the disciples' feet as teacher, as rabbi, as one that was leading these people. And not only did he wash all of the disciples' feet, he decided he would wash Judas' feet. You don't know the story of the disciples and Judas. Judas is the one that gave them up. Judas is the one that, like, like sold them out. You know, like, his boy was like, nah, I'm out. Like, I'm going to just give you away to the, the powers that be, and, and they're going to take you away, and you're going to die, and I'm going to actually be the one that's going to initiate that. Jesus knew that that was going to happen, but he still knelt down and in no strings attached kind of way like he did with each one of those disciples. He washed his feet. And he, and he served him in that matter. Same thing happened with Peter. Peter, I love Peter. Every time I mention him, I'm like, man, I relate to Peter a lot. Uh, Peter was present when Jesus was getting beat and spitting on and, and, and the crown of thorns. And, and Jesus catches Peter's eye and, 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 and has an intimate interaction with him and in that moment peter understands and realizes the weight of what jesus is doing for him no strings attached i'm enduring this for you he serves the disciples and he serves uh the the followers at that time he serves the followers that would come the three thousand that would come and acts and the the thousands and thousands and millions and millions of more who are present today, Jesus did that. He served them in that way. And I don't know if you can imagine, I'm a big like imagery fan and I love bringing the stories of the Bible to life. And, uh, and I, I, I don't know if you can imagine what it would have been like in that moment for Peter and the disciples as Jesus takes on the weight of the world and is beaten and hung on a cross. Those disciples had walked with Jesus hand in hand. I mean, they had like done the things. They had healings. They had teachings and learnings. And like, I mean, they learned from the man. And that was the circumstances that he faced and that that they saw and that they experienced firsthand. And at that point, I don't know that they even truly realized what was going on. But... uh, for us, for you and me, we weren't in the room. We weren't in the, the upper room when Jesus was washing the feet. He didn't physically wash my feet, but that story brought to life the severity and the, the relational, uh, the depth and everything that was going on. I can kind of get a glimpse of that, right? I wasn't warming myself at the fire like Peter contemplating how many times and when I would deny him again. But I get a, the weight and the gravity of what was going on for Peter in that moment. But see, that's just it, church. We get the whole story. Uh, we weren't there, but in our parents, 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 
parents, parents, parents, parents, parents weren't even thought of yet, like you get it, 2,000 years ago, whatever, however many generations. Um, we hadn't denied him yet. We hadn't pushed him aside yet. We hadn't ignored him. We hadn't uh, been physically served by him. We hadn't brought forth our own agenda. We hadn't completely disregarded him. But yet still, he washes our feet. He catches eye contact in a deeply personal, exponentially relational way in the way he interacts with us today, the way he desires to interact with us in a very relational manner. His spirit alive and living and in, in, in breathing life into us. Without agenda, with no strings of chats, Jesus gave himself the single greatest act of love. Right? That for humanity, past, present, and future, he would give, give of his whole self so that we would have forever, we would have eternity with our creator, with our father. We would have uh, eternity uh, and, and access to his heart, his love, his comfort. Nothing gained for himself, but Jesus truly modeled and instructed us in that kind of love. On the night that Jesus washed his disciples' feet, uh, he broke bread with them, and, he, and, and before he was betray, betrayed by Jesus and put to death on the cross, uh, he wanted to prepare the hearts of his closest friends, much like he desires to prepare the hearts of us as well. And how and why in, 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 in practical ways that we, we are, they are to respond. John 13, 33 through 35 says, My children, I'll be with you only a little longer. You look for me just as I told the Jews... So I tell you, where I'm going, you cannot go. A new command I give to you, though. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. This call to love one another is much more than uh, a call to be a unified church, to be uh, a brother and a beloved that would unify together under one love. And it isn't even just about uh, what we're supposed to do, like the things that we talk about. Uh, you know, his love and what he's calling us to do in that love isn't a to-do list. Serve the homeless with the Lighthouse Mission and the work that Daly's doing or serve our neighbors. Uh, it isn't a to-do list um, to, to help out in whatever way uh, we can as an act of service. It's a call to show that love. It's a call to give people Jesus. It's not a call to give a warm meal or a warm bed or a great conversation. A lot of people can just do that. It's a call to give people Jesus. That in, 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 in our act of service, in our ability, in our connection with the Father, it's a, a, it's a call that they may get a glimpse of, just maybe even the slightest glimpse of what living and being loved by Jesus truly is about. Because I don't know about you, I think, like I mentioned earlier, like, at times I feel really loved. At times I feel a little distant. At times, man, I'm really pressing in. At times I'm pushing out and distancing myself. But our ability to give that love that we've experienced is the ability to just show the slightest glimpse to someone what it's like to be truly loved by a Savior, by our Creator, by the one that desires so much for us to have a loving relationship that is unmatched to anything earthly that we've ever experienced. To be loved by a creator that created us with great purpose and meaning, with skills and abilities and, and giftings and resources. 
And where we don't have those things, he fills in the gap and says, hey, I got you. Just trust me. Here's the deal. Why? I ask myself this question. Why do people come? Why do people come to a little dry box barn where you can't light real candles because, you know, it might go up in flames? No. Why do people come? Why do people come to this barn? It's not because of the knowledge that's here, because I'm the one teaching. I know it's not about the knowledge, right? It's, it's that there's something different. It's that there's experiences in this room that have brought you here. Interactions, whether it be directly with Jesus where he's led you in your life or through somebody else that has been led by Jesus to experience him firsthand and what he can provide for us, what he can provide for you, what he provides for me. It's that experience of Jesus and that's, what we get to display in these unique opportunities of loving people with no strings attached. No agenda, no gain of our own other than just being called to love in a genuine and practical way. I, th I think it was Amber. I'm not sure if it was Amber that said it this way, but the difference between telling somebody about Jesus and having them experience Jesus. Now, Telling people about Jesus is an amazing thing. It's actually, it takes a lot of skill, though. I mean, it really does. But having them experience Jesus firsthand and what he's done in your life and what he desires to do and, and the things that he's doing in your life, that is worth its weight in the most glorious riches on this planet. It's not gold anymore, right? Like internet time or something. I don't know what it is. It's worth its weight in, like, bandwidth. All right? Okay? Way more than just telling somebody about it. It's leading them to experience it in practical and genuine ways. And that's what we're setting out to do with all the things that we're talking about. That's what Daly and our team's setting out to do with the Lighthouse Mission and the unique opportunity to hopefully, as much as it's, like, stressful to have all 32 beds filled, like, that's 32 parts that hopefully, based on what we're doing and what the community is doing, what CTK and the care team is doing, is showing them the genuine love of Jesus. Amber's prayers for us, if it reminds you, was to see people the way God sees them, as his creation. First and foremost, above anything else, they are created by God. And for us to step forward in practical ways. My practical prayer for us to take away this morning starts before those interactions, and we ask God to be a part of it. It can be a quick prayer right before you do the thing. Pay for somebody's coffee in front of you. Uh, you know, uh, help a homeless person on the side of the road. Serve it. Lighthouse, lighthouse mission. But just a simple prayer to God that says, God, will you enter into this time with me? God, will you... Will you be what is displayed? Will your love, will your, will your presence be known? Will, will, will you actually, uh, will you enter into this time with me that I may grow during this time? That I may understand your heart more because I did seven loads of betting. I don't even know how many loads you have to do on a Saturday morning. It might be way under, it might be way over. I don't know. Sign up. You'll find out. Um, but, but God desires to have your heart grow in those situations just as much as the people who won't even understand that some lover of Jesus did the bedding for them. and They got a clean bed to sleep in. What a blessing is that that we just overlook, right? And so what I want to do right now is I want to close us in, in that prayer, that God would enter into our times. I'm going to invite the band to come forward that God would enter into those times with us as God lays them and prompts us on our heart. Daily let it off perfectly and said, however God is prompting you, ignore it. Allow him to lead you through those situations. Will you pray with me? God, we, uh, we thank you for um, 
the interactiveness of a relationship with you and what that entails, Lord. Lord, we thank you that, uh, that it is your desire uh, to use us, that we are plan A, B, and C, and, and that you desire uh, for us to be a, a attentive to your heart. Lord, that you desire us to be in tune with your leading and prompting in our lives, Lord. Lord, but it's also your desire to just have us trust you. That we don't know the outcome, that we don't put forth our own agenda, that we don't uh, grasp after an accomplishment or a, a, a recognition, Lord, but that we just do it as an act of service to you, and then you take care of the rest. I actually thank you that that is what you desire for us. It takes the weight off of what is to come and, and just allows us to simply say, yes. So uh, this morning, as we close with these last two songs, Lord, will you continue to speak to our hearts and to our minds, uh, your desires and your will, uh, Lord, and may you enter into our acts of service with each other, with our neighbors and community members, and with the strangers we may pass on the street. Pray this in your name. Amen.